I have received a very exciting package that I backed on Kickstarter. It's a bundle of hugely Norse myth inspired Dungeons and Dragons slash 5e content created by the teams at Mana Project Studio and I can't wait to open it. I've took it out of the box but not completely unwrapped all this. It was just on the top and this is the cover of the Game Master screen. Um, just the thin cover of it, the actual screen is underneath this bubble wrap. So let's take a look. Let's peel back the bubble wrap. Oh, now the first thing we see is a set of dice. Now these dice are unlike any other dice I've seen. And I'm looking forward to having a play with them, seeing how they work mechanically with the rules and law contained in the books within as you can see there's three of them they're kind of like a jade green black toned and they've got beautiful gold inked runes on so let's see them they're quite chunky they're probably bigger than your average d20 and i like the shiny background shows them up so i've got them then this this is the gm screen let's have a look at this first Ooh, very halloween-esque we are near in October. I know we're only halfway through September, but look at that. That's one kind of a sacrificial altar. And then if we turn it around, we get the legendary scene between Fenrir and Odin. Odin is on his horse, Sleipnir, who has eight legs, and his two wolves, Freki and Jerry. But look how big Fenrir is. Fenrir has been bound up for a long time. He probably out of many people besides Loki and Loki's his father has a big grudge against Odin so I'm not surprised they picked that encounter in Ragnarok which is a canon event it's mentioned in various sagas and manuscripts that Odin will fight Fenrir but Fenrir will ultimately defeat Odin at the end of it all talk about comeuppance and then if we fold it out we get to see the big, what I can only assume is a frost giant, judging by the beautiful ice on his huge sword. Gosh, he could cut the mountains in two with that one. Again, horns. I guess it's just my my historian hat coming on. I'm always uneasy when I see horns involved in Viking art, but with giants, I'll allow it. They are a fantasy race. Um, and he is a definite giant, or a jotun, as they're known. I'm liking the look of that interesting creature over there. It doesn't quite look like a bird. Could maybe be a different thing, but let's look inside the GM screen. We've got a beautiful world map of Yggdrasil, and we've got all the realms. And thankfully, they give you chapter pages as well within the books. So if we were going to the realm of the Azir, which is Eisheimer, as the world tree, world of the Aesir come from, there lies the city of Asgard. And its temples and palaces no word can describe the marvel that is the world of the azir where legends live fate converges here like the winds in the eye of the storm in the city of the gods so we can see we go to general features page 84 the journey in asgard page 192 or encounter in asgard page 193 and it does this one two three four five six seven eight nine because there are indeed nine realms in the world the world of the norse myths and the yggdrasil is the world tree that binds them all and I like how they've got the eagle at the top and down at the bottom there is possibly the dragon possibly a dragon because there is meant to be a dragon at the bottom of Idrisil Noru on its roots as well as the dog Garm that guards hell but yeah so yeah Vanaheim, Midgard, Svartalheim, Jotunheim Ah, there's Nibelheimer. Oh no, that's Jotunheim. That's from Jotunheim, Spolheim, Vanaheim. No, that is Helheim. So maybe that is... Maybe that is the dragon just coiling around. There's a bit of a wing coming out there. Let's open it in full and we get this beautiful glimpse into runes. Now this is what drew me to this campaign, how they're using runes, both kind of mythologically and in homage to the Elder Fifth Arc, where any of our rune knowledge comes from. Um, so of course runes have been adapted and you find all sorts of books on runes. Some of them are mostly creative interpretations, 
but of course runes were used by vikings and cav runestones so of course in D, D or tabletop roleplay games they often have magical features in these so you can see we've got the three gods that they're well not quite representing but the three main gods that feature in this in this world which is freya himdal and tyr himdal's the watchman that's why he's got the galahorn he signals when Ragnarok, the Doom of the Gods, is on its way, and Tyr is the God of Justice, and he only has one hand. I don't think you can quite see for the wording, but it, there it is, it's a stump. That's how he's holding his shield, Captain America asks. And of course, Freya, the goddess of love and therefore sexual desire, always, always portrayed rather scantily and seductively. Oh, come back. Um, but yes, we've got all these different runes, and some of them, as you can see, have positive well different results depending on if it's pointing down or if it's pointing up and again i'm looking forward to finding out how we roll the dice runes and work out these so if we've got thurizaz which means the encounter so if it was pointing up so every time you suffer damage from a single source reduce it by one point if this brings the total to zero or less you suffer no damage well that kind of goes by the book because if it's zero you don't suffer anything but if it's down Every time you suffer from a single soft, increase it by one point. So there you go. The runes, historically, in well, sorry, in spiritual circles, have definitely always had double meaning regarding fate and occurrence. And over here, we've got more runes, and then we've got the nine virtues, the alignments, and we've got the clans. So we've got the bear warriors, the Galahorn, the icy crows. Love that name. The Yotun sons. Odin's Eye and Wolves of the Shadow. And I like these banners. Very nice. Lovely detail there. So that is the DM screen. Now we get to the books. And this is the first one. <laughs> Journey to Ragnarok. Oh, a Norse mythology inspired adventure. Module 1st to 15th level. Across the Nine Worlds setting for 5th edition. And again, they've gone for that epic Fenrir versus Odin kind of cover design. Let's have just a flick through. Oh, look at that. Just look at that. There, of course, there's Odin. There's Fenrir. That's Jormungand, the world serpent. He's, of course, going for the god Thor. Oh, they've got some Valkyries. I always like a good sign of Valkyrie. And they're riding horses that don't have wings. I like that. I do like that a lot. And of course, and they've got Berserker Warriors down here. We've got, oh, we've got Wolves, Colin Hattie. They're the bad guys. They troll and swallow the sun and the moon. And of course, here we've got beautiful detail on the edging. We're just going to do a flick through here because there's a lot in this book. It is how many pages? A lot of pages. Where are the contents? Over 300 pages there, people. Over three, And just look at that. This is a glimpse of the amazing artwork. Amazing artwork. And, of course, so much Jotun Sons. Wolves of the Shadow, the Mikravaga. Just beautiful. Paladin, Ranger, Rogue. Mastery of the Tricks. They're interesting, interesting. The Rune Master, yes, this is this is interesting. I'm just I'm so eager to get into it. Circle of Freya, Circle of Tear, the Bones of Yimmy, ooh, spells. Oh sorcerer, yes, sorceress. I've never actually played a sorcerer. In like still oh, typical fantasy D D. But look, her scale, they're actually using kind of historical vocabulary here. Um, ah, this is, must be backgrounds. The Yala, again, lovely, kind of like the brooches exist like this. Not in that particular design, but they are round with a huge pin going through it. I saw a mega one in the British Museum's Viking exhibition once. No, no, I'm not going to pronounce that word. Skogamada? Broken armband there. Mm, interesting. Thralls, they were the slaves to the Vikings. Veiringa. Vikinger, there we go. 
I thought we'd find the word equipment. Oh, just just look. And then the journey to Ragnarok. Just look. All these dead people around. I think this, yeah, this is the serpent at the bottom of the good world tree. Cause it's got the roots. But yeah, you don't want to meet him. Oh, just, just stunning. Oh, look at that map. There were winter camps like this found in England. They had a big embankment around. The famous one is Repton. They actually hijacked a church. Well, say hijacked. They repurposed church, made it as part of the big foundations because they always put it towards an inlet of sea or a lowlands. Oh, just, just so much. Amazing. Amazing, amazing, amazing. And then it goes on to the world. Oh, just look at this. Just look at that. Expanded Midgarda. <gasps> Monsters. Oh, oh. Or NPCs at least, maybe? Oh no, no, that's definitely a monster. That's a Draugr. Incorporeal. <gasps> Tree of Sacrifice. Oh, oh no, maybe it is. Uh, watch it, try Oh, Encounters. Here we are. So yeah, they're a mixture of NPCs and possible monsters. Skat. Or Sknat. I'm not sure how you pronounce that name. Oh, just oh, she looks nice. Definitely seeing like a there of Viking, Vikings TV series fan coming through there. If I've got casual encounters and oh yes, the journey to Niflheimer. Right, I'm gonna pause this one here because we could go all the way through to the end, but then we'll never see the other books because there are other books besides this one. So we're gonna put that to the side because I'm well aware that my toddler is gonna come running in, in a minute. So here's the next one. This is Echoes of Doom. And look at the beautiful detail on this cover. And of course, that is the giant set. Again, horns, but I'll allow it. I'll allow it. And let me just show you the back. So, Echoes of Doom is a massive adventure book to plunge into the world of Journey to Ragnarok, the first one. The Norse mythological setting for 5e Echoes of Doom is not only an anthology of adventures that you may play as single sessions or as a campaign, but it's also a useful tool for getting inspired and creating your own campaigns in this astonishing setting. And it includes several really exciting adventures, both on scene and land and at different points. So we're just going to have another flick through. Ooh, yes. The artwork. I have to salute the artists they've got on here. They are absolutely... Really, really good. Jimbal Vinter. The Danevert Guard. Ooh. It's beautiful. Monsters. Sailing on Midgard. Yep, they introduce boats. Oh, look at that. The longhouse scene. With, I must know, either a guy with long hair or a lady sat on the high chair. Quite like that, quite like that. But yes, I'm looking forward to... Oh, King Elderbrand. Hi, you remind me of King Alfred for some reason. Um, but yes, looking forward to looking through this. Because I would love to playtest a single one of these. Either as the DM or as a player, but it's just beautiful. Then, then we have another book. A very adult <laughs> rated cover. Um, maybe a, a Volva. A Norse witch, although they have various names, just also have runes, and this is called the Norse Grimoire. A collection of Norse magical signs for 5th edition. And again, I just love the gold detail on the edge, it's so shiny, so shiny. I almost wish I'd got it on the first book, but I didn't quite have the money. So, Norse Grimoire's 5th edition supplement died to in designed to integrate Galdrastafir or Icelandic magical staves, and the Elder Thark, the alphabet of the runes of knowledge, to your games and campaigns. This grimoire is the follow-up of our work and research that started almost 20 years ago. So this was when I was quite young when I started this, <laughs> which has given life to the Journey of Ragnarok project, our first Kickstarter campaign. With Norse Grimoire, you can improve your journey to Ragnarok sessions and setting, but you can also power up your characters or worlds in any setting you like. Wow, let's have a quick look. Of course, title cover, woof. Yep, there's some definite power going on with what she's waving around over the sea. 
lots of pages. How many pages have we got? 192. Chapter 1. Ritual tattoos, yes. Vikings did do tattoos. They have, they have found evidence of at least staining and carving into their teeth. There was a school like that found in, in southern England from a failed raid because they were all beheaded, these poor, poor Norsemen that were caught. They appear to be quite young, the runes of the Elder Futhark. The origins of the runes. Oh, here we are, look. Staves. Odin hanging from the well tree he did he had sacrificed himself to himself because he wants to be the god of knowledge and no one else ah here we are the three norns they be fate one knows past future and present and here we are just a glimpse of one room look Wunjo. joy and fulfillment and i love how it's got like artifacts with them carved in that's nice that's really nice. Oh, can't wait to go to that. Okay, last one because my toddler is imminently due. I don't know how long this video is getting. This is the Rune Thief. Now, I'm not quite sure where his arm is coming from. I believe it's coming out like this kind of thing. Um, but we're seeing kind of like mysterious figure. Oh, yes, a very Halloween -y grin, grinning man on the back. The Rune Thief is a series of nine adventures set in the world of Journey to Ragnarok, linkable to form a campaign that will accompany the characters from the first to the seventh level while exploring the heart of Midgarda and trying to stop a mysterious threat. Something terrible is about to subvert the order of things in Midgarda, threatening the true foundations of reality and knowledge. Dare you face the Rune Thief? No, I couldn't resist that because it just sounded so intriguing. Oh, beautiful. Not, not as dramatic as the other inside covers, but I love just the scenes. I love seeing terrain. Terrain of Norse. Norseness. Here we are. So that's a possible NPC. I mean, Borgest Ulfahjata, the wolf heart. Just look at that. Again, lovely detailed maps. Sorry, that was probably the conclusion. Don't. Well. Not end conclusion. Part two lookouts. The Thief's Gambit. So it's more. Ooh, what was that out there? Oh, yes. Wow. Sails in flames. Wow. What is going on there, my dad? No, my dude, even. Not my dad. No, I'm saying my dad for. <laughs> um, but yeah. Really interesting storyline to follow. Oh, an owl. That's interesting with bear claws. What's an owl got to do with this? Again, I need time to read through it. That I don't play it. Going now. And for us, the eye and the wolf. There. So that is beautiful. So there we have it. Wow. A whole bunch of Norse myth inspired D and D content right there for me to fawn over, drool over, dream of, possibly play, maybe just roll some dice for myself and see what happens. But thank you very much, Mana Project Studios. You guys have really knocked that one out of the park. It looks really good quality. The touch of the books is solid. The design is solid. It doesn't feel flimsy. It definitely feels worth the pennies that I invested in this. Don't tell husband. Um, but yeah, thank you very much for watching.